you know, this is great, but I honestly don't think you're going to get anything out of me. Yeah, I think it's kind of more of the... Uh, and then, so it was a nice facial. road trip. Nice yeah. chatting with you. I got to go. Fine. All right, let's get down to business. My <laughs> connection with, with Graining, if you were to sit down and interview him, would not be a, a, a pleasant discussion. Yeah. Hi, Matt. Uh, good to see you again. Remember me? Yeah. You and Graining must have worked very well together. No, he didn't. Yeah. <laughs> Matt had a presence in this school. Uh, he was a high-profile person. It's not like he said, everybody look at me, look at me, look at me, but he had a profile uh, because he was good-natured. He provided in the classroom more humor than sometimes was desired, at least on the part of the teacher. We locked horns and, you know, that's going to happen. Um, but I don't think he was ever mean-spirited or malicious. I think if you look at The Simpsons, and I've seen maybe one episode. Really? Out of all of them. Um, it was Matt. Yeah. It was Matt. That kind of humor that, that bites but doesn't tear. That's an excellent way to put it. <laughs> bites but doesn't tear. He played it straight all the way through. I mean, come on. Uh, he'd been, if he skipped class, it wasn't noticeable. Um, he went out for sports. He was involved in, uh, in various clubs. Got involved in student government. Oh, he, he was the anti-establishment establishment, establishment yeah. type guy. Uh, no, student body president. We're not. Yeah, his, his sister, his sister Lisa, uh, was senior class president. Okay. But he was student body president. I remember I told you that. Um, yeah. He and his friends formed the Teens for Decency party, and they promised a clean sweep in government. And they filled most, but not all, the uh, positions in student government at the time. He and a friend of his, Jim Angel, they were both members of the Comics Appreciation Club, the KAK. But for one of the Christmas issues, he'd written, it was a Christmas Carol revisited. Someone killed Scrooge. And Bob Cratchit then goes, we're rich, we're rich, we're rich. <laughs> and Tiny Tim brandishing a knife, <laughs> says to Bob Cratchit, what do you mean, we? <laughs> and that was the end of A Christmas Carol Revisited. <laughs> so, and a, why do I remember that? I have no idea why I remember that, but it's still, unfortunately or fortunately, you know, yeah. take your pick, it sticks in my mind. It was, it was one of those Twilight Zone twists <laughs> or a Matt Groening type twist. Mm -hmm. The rumors would let me to you and what made me ask my friend to get in contact was that there was a rumor at Lincoln High School there's a I know teacher what you're say. that inspired Matt Groening to create Mr. Burns. <laughs> and as you said, you've seen one episode, if I remember correctly, Mr. Burns does not have a big part in that episode. Am I a capitalist? Do I believe in the free enterprise system? Yes. Check. <laughs> yeah. uh, am I greedy? No, I think I'm a very generous person. Uh, am I an owner? Well, I own my clothes and my car and then go much beyond that. Yeah. So you no. A, you have a right hand man by the name of Waylon Smithers who's secretly in love with you? Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I know. All right, well. No. Yeah. Sorry. Well, you know, we got enough uh, media. We're just going to go back okay. and switch every word there where we're going to make you say, I am Mr. Burns. You know, that would be fun. <laughs> you know, actually. You do it and I'll seal your ass. <laughs> All right.